Hey guys, my name is Amy and today I wanted to talk about my favourite plants this month and the first one I want to talk about is my Peperomia incana. I've had this for a few months now and it started as only three leaves I think and it's pushed out tons of new growth recently and I had a comment from one of you guys saying that once it gets started it grows like a weed which I'm so excited for because I love this plant so much. It's quite unusual for me to like more of a silvery plant. I'm usually really into my sort of really glossy dark green leaves, but I just think this one is so cool. Hopefully you can really see that fuzzy texture, especially on the newer leaves. So I'm just really happy to see it starting to take off and hopefully it does grow like a weed <laughs> and I can have a really big one, have some cuttings. So that is Peperomia incana. The next one I'm going to talk about today is another fairly new one to my collection. This is a strawberry begonia. And since being in my home, it's already put out some of those tendrils. And one of them, I don't know how easy it's going to be to show you. There you go. It's already putting out a teeny tiny baby. So I'm just really happy. This one is obviously quite a fast grower. I think it's got four of those tendrils growing in now. And I'm really excited for it to have lots of those little baby plants hanging off the ends. I think I'll probably end up leaving them on there versus taking them off and propagating them because I think it will just look really, really cool. I love the pattern on the leaves of this. You can see it's got quite fuzzy leaves. It's just a really, really unique plant. I'm tempted maybe one day to get the variegated one if I continue to get on well with this. Look at all these lovely new leaves in the centre there as well. So that is the strawberry begonia. Next up, this is an older plant of mine. This is a Mona Lisa lipstick plant. And this isn't my favorites this month because it's finally settled in. It seems to be doing well now. I ordered this online with two other plants. And <clears throat> sorry, when I opened up the parcel, I was really excited at first. Well, first when I opened the parcel, I was a bit concerned because it looked like everything had just been thrown in a plastic bag and then thrown in a box. There was no protection around the plants. There wasn't anything, they weren't in pots, but they still had soil around the roots, but there was nothing to stop the soil going everywhere and everything was soaking wet. So when I first opened um, the box, I was a little bit concerned, but then I saw how big this was. It was bigger than it is now, it was huge. And I thought, oh wow, that's bigger than I was expecting. So that's good. But when I took it out and had a closer look, I realized that it was covered in mold, like white fluffy mold um, from being surrounded by, I think, really soaking wet soil and then just put in a plastic bag. It just got way too humid. Most of the plant was rotted. I was able to save a few like top cuts because the base was just um, completely mush. <laughs> so um, the other two plants that I got in that order, they recovered a bit quicker than this one. This took a hell of a long time to get it rerouted and this, summer and especially recently it's really growing into its own plant versus sort of little cuttings that just took such a long time to to recover from I guess the the shipping so I'm really really happy because I love this one I love how shiny the leaves are the leaves are quite big for a lipstick plant you can see lovely lovely shiny new growth and I think we've got some blooms coming in there we go yeah somewhere <laughs> So really, really happy that this one is finally starting to take off and I'm really excited that it's going to be like hopefully a fairly sizable plant pretty soon. So that is the Mona Lisa lipstick plant. Next up, I think this one has been in a favourites before, but this is one of my ultimate favourite plants. This is sort of a top 10. I love it so much. This is a tongue fell. I think a piece just fell off. <laughs> Something just fell out of the pot. I don't know if it was a bit of orchid bark or a leaf, but it's gone. <laughs> it's completely disappeared. Um, yeah, this is a tongue fern. I can't remember the Latin name off the top of my head, so I will write it down below. But I just, I love this one so much. I repotted it maybe a month or two ago to give it a little bit more room. And it's definitely sized up with the pot. It's, I think, quite a bit bigger. Um, and I just, I love how how shiny the leaves are. They're a really lovely deep green. And this is so easy for a fern, I think because it is a bit of a like thicker variety. If you see, I've got a leaf there, I'm adding pressure and it's not really budging too much. It's not really flimsy and thin. 
so it's not as dramatic as some other ferns that you can find out there but I, I just love this one so much this really is an ultimate favorite really really pretty so that is the tongue fern next up i have another peperomia this is peperomia obtusifolia obtusifolia a little variegated one and i got this one for my birthday this year so i've had it for where are we like two and a bit months i think um and it's definitely sized up since getting it we've got some really lovely big leaves at the top there that are new um, you can see some little new growth in the centre there as well and I'm just really happy with how well it's doing. I had an obtusifolia years and years and years ago and it um, had really bad thrips. I think it was the, the culprit of my first really bad thrip outbreak before I really knew what they were. So I managed to save a piece of the plant but it, it kind of never recovered. It didn't really grow for ages after so I did end up, did end up parting of that one. So I'm really happy to have another that's doing really, really well. I love the variegation as well. I'm not usually like too fussed about variegation. Sometimes I like it. Um, I think this is really cute though. And the green is kind of more of a sagey green versus the dark green, which again is quite unusual for me to be drawn to. That is Peperomia obtusifolia. Next up, I have some propagations here. This is some cuttings of my goldfish plant. I think there's some, yeah, there's some variegated ones in there as well, but it's mostly my all green goldfish plant. And they all root, I took some cuttings in um, a plant jaws video and they all rooted fine. And I've potted, I think this is all of them up into soil now. Um, and this is my favorites because my mother plant sadly has thrips, which I'm, I think I'm nearly on top of. I'm now just sort of keeping an eye on it every few days to see if I can see any new ones, um, but there's not very many popping up when I do find them. But I'm just really happy to at least have some successful cuttings in case I really struggle to get on top of um, the thrips on the mother plant. I don't feel like I'm not gonna, you know, have a goldfish plant. So I'm really happy that they're doing really well. And once I, fingers crossed, get all the thrips cleared off the mother plant, I'll be putting these back in with it. But yeah, those are some goldfish plant cuttings. That I love them, they're so shiny. Really, really cute plant. Haven't had any of my goldfish plant bloom for me yet. Um, hopefully they do one day, but I don't mind because I just, I really love the foliage. Next up, I think this one has been in a favourite as well. This is my Pachira Aquatica that we got as a wedding gift from my brother and his wife. You can see the pot there <laughs> um, that they got for us as well. And I'm just, I just love this so much. It sits um, like next to our TV. So I'm kind of looking at it in the evenings or whenever we're watching TV. And it's just, it's put out lots of growth since um, since we got it. I'll try and find, there's a little, a little new piece starting off just there. And this is a plant that I'd never had before um, getting this one. I don't know why, because it's a really lovely pet friendly staple plant I think and a good um a good option if you're looking for a bigger plant as well that isn't going to pose any risk to your pets or your children so this is I think another one that is just one of my top favorite plants in general but I've just been really loving looking at it and looking at all the progress this month especially and again I love how textured and shiny the leaves are in this one really really cool that is Pachira aquatica or a money tree. I think we're down to the last two now. Um, again, I think I've talked about this one before, but this is um, a cedar mackinoy, and this is a little succulent that I grew from cuttings quite a while ago, and it took them a long time to settle in and start growing, but they've really taken off this year. And I just think it's such a cute little plant. Again, it's another dark glossy plant. That's definitely the the type of foliage that I'm most drawn to and I'm just really happy with how it's doing. We're getting some really good length to it as well now on some of these pieces. I always get tempted when I see these in garden centres to buy a bigger pot of it because I do love it so much but also I'm really enjoying watching the progress of this one so I think I will stick to just keeping this one and seeing how big I can get it to grow. So that is Cedar Mackinoy 
And the last plant on this list today is another one that I got for my birthday a couple months ago, and that is my cast iron plant, the Aspidistra elata. This one's currently living on our dining table, and I potted it into this pot recently, which I love. I think it looks really nice in that pot. Get the saucer because I'm getting soil falling at the bottom, but I'm just really enjoying watching this one grow. We have got a couple of <coughs> newer leaves popping in. I don't know if you can see that one there. There's a new one. Um, I think this lovely big one in the middle is new. It's quite hard to show you all of this one. I think this one's new. Yeah, I, I just love looking at this one. And it's one that I find really therapeutic to dust as well. <laughs> I think because it's got the sort of large flat leaves, it's not too fiddly. It's just nice to clean the leaves off and see that shine come back again. I would like, I think, to have this one in our bedroom. At the moment, we've got a snake plant in there and I don't know whether I'm gonna keep the snake plant or if I'm possibly gonna sell it. But um, yeah, for the moment, it's on our dining table, doing really well. It's not too, um, needy and that it doesn't need watering too often it doesn't need to be somewhere that's got really high light um, and it's pet friendly again it's another large pet friendly option if that's something you're looking for that isn't going to require like too much of your time or space in like windows and, and close to really have bright light sources that um, other plants do need that is yeah cast iron plant or aspidistra elata so this is actually the last plant I'll be talking about today. I forgot to film this one before I put everything else away, but this is a Ludicia discolor. I don't know if it has um, a more specific name because I have the one that's sort of the really dark foliaged Ludicia discolor that I think is slightly more common than this one. But this is a lovely green one. And so do let me know if you know if this has another more specific name but it's just been doing really, really well for me. It's sort of all facing one way because of how I have it sat on a shelf, but I just love looking at this one. I've got a couple of cuttings going as well, which I'm excited to add back into the pot, but I just absolutely love the pattern on those leaves. So really, really cool, gorgeous plant. And yeah, like I said, I do have the darker foliage one, which I've had for a long, long time that used to look absolutely gorgeous. And in the last, year it's just been going downhill and I don't know why so I'm really happy to have one that's doing really well for me um because I do I love these plants they're really really cool um but speaking of the other one that I have that reminds me I do want to I think at some point do a video about plants that I'm struggling with because I think I do a lot of the the favorites videos um and talk about the plants that are doing really well for me but that's not the case with all of them you know I've definitely got quite a few that I'm I'm struggling with a bit at the moment so I'd love to know if that's a kind of video that you'd be interested in seeing. And I'd also love to know what your favourite plants are this month. So that is everything for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't know whether this is coming out before or after my Peperomia Care Tips video. So if that is a video that you're waiting on and it's not out yet, it will be the next video after this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm Amy's Greenish Thumb on Instagram and TikTok. And I'll see you next time. Bye.